This time tomorrow, we'll finally be playing an updated version of Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ. Season 2 will finally, finally, after three months, be here for us to experience. Season 1 felt like it lasted an eternity, so happy to finally see something different on the table. But before we do, today I want to run down some of the end of Season 1 stuff here, a sort of more technical checklist on what the next 24 hours will bring. Not necessarily talking so much about the content itself, but more so some fundamental things to be aware of. As we go along, drive your thoughts below, and for the last time, check out my friends over at Gamer Advantage for their best deal of the new year going on until midnight. But for now, let's take a look at Season 2's fundamental changes and information that you should be aware of. First and foremost, when does Season 2 launch exactly? Now, the launch time differs from some seasons year over year. Previously, we'd seen updates go out at 10 a.m. Pacific time. The last few years with COVID and everything, people working from home, a lot of trying to alleviate server stress. We saw updates go out overnight at midnight Pacific, but this time around for Season 2, as of tomorrow, we'll see the update and content go live for Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, and DMZ at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, 5 p.m. in the evening, if I'm not mistaken, in the UK. Now, if that doesn't cover your specified time zone, on screen should be a graphic that will list a few more time zones, so hopefully that can give you all the information necessary or enough information that it's an easier conversion. But that said, what about preloads? Because historically speaking, we should have seen this happen already. We should have seen this notified and start downloading on at least PlayStation by now. Because of that, I was curious and kind of skeptical that maybe a preload wouldn't actually happen since we hadn't seen it just yet. Now, I reached out for comment and was told that there will be no preload for the update and that downloads will start at 9 a.m. Pacific as the update actually going live. So fingers crossed this isn't something that ends up being too detrimental. The bigger the file size, naturally the longer it'll take for a lot of people. You and I, maybe our internet speeds are good enough that this will just take a few minutes, but for rurally based players and those just somewhere where the connection isn't as good, it may take quite a bit of time to download if it's anything like 10 gigabytes and up of data. So fingers crossed this doesn't take too long with a lack of preload, but that is where we'll be at with that. Now, in the meantime, we'll have, depending on when this video goes up, like 12 to 15 hours to work with at the end of season one here, that if you haven't completed any of the basic rank 250 stuff, that you have to work on your battle pass, that's where you'll want to do all that kind of stuff if you haven't completed it. In fact, the game actually, at least on the battle pass side of things, may work on that for you, but in a way that is kind of a bummer depending on how you look at it and your outlook on it. That dealing with battle pass token expenditures. As announced by Call of Duty's Twitter, at the end of each season, any unspent battle pass token tier skips will be auto spent on remaining battle pass rewards along with a preset path to complete the battle map any extra battle token tier skips that are not auto spent will carry over to the next season so if you haven't completed the pass or rather redeemed your earned tokens the game plans to do that for you on one hand that can maybe be perceived as oh thanks for doing that almost forgot to spend those tokens but on the other hand and likely more common side it's well wait, I didn't, I didn't want to redeem those. I wanted to save those for next season since nothing really left in the battle pass really enticed me, which at the beginning of this new battle pass system seems like that would have been the case, affording players more choice in their progression and what they unlock and when they unlock it. So I'm sure for a lot of people, this is going to be a bummer of a situation that come tomorrow, it's going to auto spend any unspent tokens if you haven't completed the battle pass. Admittedly, I've had mine completed for so long that I could be wrong on this, but it seems like the only way to have roll over is if there's any purchased battle pass tokens and tier skips that exceed the 100 needed to complete the battle pass itself. But if you have any extra remaining after those 100 are spent, that's what goes towards next season's pass. So just know that the auto spend is likely going to be coming as of tomorrow, what is presumed like 8.59 a.m. Pacific time. So if you have any battle pass tokens that don't put you over that 100 mark, just know that it's going to spend itself. Now, I breezed over ranking a bit earlier because if you hit 250, you're max, but if you're not, you still have some work to do, but really, as we'll touch on in just a second, it's not the end of the world if you don't hit 250. I think the only thing that you'll end up missing out on is that Vertex Drive blueprint for the Icarus LMG, and that's assuming that it's not necessarily continued on into next season, and it's just still the limited max level reward for Season 1, but that could be something that still carries over. But if you haven't hit 250 and you'd like to, Double XP is live right now, along with Double Weapon XP, for at least this next 24 hours or so, leading until the update for Season 2. Most likely, it won't be super beneficial I mean, after three months of season one, a lot of people are 250, but if you still need work on it, it's something you can take advantage of. Now, I touched on that 250 not reaching it isn't the end of the world, because this year with Modern Warfare 2 and this upcoming season, rank resets aren't necessarily so much resets. Unlike prior years, Modern Warfare changed it up a bit where we will not see our ranks completely reset back down to a new baseline level. So if you're not 250, don't worry. You don't start back at like level 55 or anything like that, but this year instead we have 
additive ranks. So every single season, we'll see four prestiges added on top of the hard level cap that we previously had from the season before. This was the case with season one, though. Initially, the blog post that we got for season two and messaging, someone didn't do their math right. It just kind of got lost in translation where they said the new level cap was going to be 500, which then prompted a correction a few days later. But if you look at it, that would have been five additional prestiges. We saw with season one even set the precedent where we had four prestiges added with season one. Season one, level one was 55. If you were into those prestiges, you got past those military ranks. So the basic underlying system was already in place. Someone just kind of got ahead of themselves here. So we're not losing out on anything by comparison to season one. It's still mere. 200 levels for the season it just doesn't classify that sort of base as an additional prestige overall where 56 was prestige one making it five on the season so we get four additional prestiges still 200 levels but anyways your rank won't reset but instead it'll be something that you can keep going through and then hit a new level cap now, I like that your rank doesn't reset each season, but at the same time, I don't like how limited it is to only 200 levels per season. For some, that may be plenty, but to me, I've always thought that level 1000, that marker, was the sweet spot because the hardcore grinders would hit it. But even me, whose job it is to create content on and play the game, I get kind of close some seasons that I really grinded out, but I still wouldn't hit it. So at that point, when you have something so high like that, you're progressing whether or not it be completing challenges, playing matches, all that XP earned still feels like it has value. It's progressing towards something. 200 and a hard cap is too low in my opinion, though I'd very much so still like to see a career level that's just infinite. I feel like that'd be cool with the hard seasonal cap that I could also progress a career rank at all times, but that's just me anyways that's your stuff in the like next 24 hours that will happen here in terms of resets in terms of battle pass stuff but the final thing i'm going to touch on is a bit more information on the upcoming weaponry of season two because we got some details here more specifically on when we'll be able to earn those in a battle pass blog post and trailer today we learned more about the kv broadside iso hemlock and dual kadachis from the battle pass they actually even showed us where these would be coming from so firstly the kv broadside is available in sector b4 and this will be the earliest that we've ever seen a weapon introduced as a primary weapon here with this it's essentially tier 10 as it's the next step beyond that first sector so to complete a sector you have to end up unlocking the four base items and then the air quote bonus item that's a fifth item so five tier skips for that first sector and then you can move on to the next adjacent sectors and b4 is right next to that starting one so that means that by tier 10 you could end up having that kv broadside now the iso hemlock is in sector b11 this one's a bit further away if you forget about the broadside you can get there in 30 tiers so kind of deviates the path a little bit here on what you'd be able to get it's not so much 15 and 31 like we've seen before in the past it's more of like a 30 and 35 to grab both so an interesting curveball with this one but with this it's more user end choice and the dual kadachi is available in sector b13 kind of surprising to me but also not we predicted that it'd be a later air quote filler reward but i didn't expect the kadachi to be right around that halfway point of the pass but sector b13 would be tier 25 going through the kv broadside selection path or you'd have to circle back from the hemlock at tier 50 so it'd be kind of counterproductive to do it that way you could end up going kv broadside dual kadachi and then iso hemlock at that point you could have all three by tier 40 so it really just comes down to what you want but to me that's the one that i'll get to when i get there priorities for me are the KV Broadside and ISO Hemlock. But beyond that, what you can expect is patch notes and tomorrow's videos. Patch notes, of course, usually go out about like an hour to two hours before the update itself. And of course, we'll keep you up to date with everything you need to know, covering the update, all patch notes and changes, and then weapon tuning as of tomorrow. We're gonna have two videos up, so stick it here on the channel for that. But that's the end of season one. That's what you can expect here in the next 12 to 24 hours. And of course, with the launch of season two. But before we wrap everything up, one final reminder, and I apologize for beating a dead horse with this. Today is the last day up until midnight Eastern time that you can end up getting the max of 24% off discount with code espresso over at Gamer Advantage. You guys have heard the pitch before, best blue light glasses on the market, comfortable, lightweight, and durable frames. Lens is clinically proven, science down there in the description below over on their website. But again, for the next couple of hours until midnight Eastern, that is something that the 14% off sale site-wide for some frames still does apply. And then code espresso stacking on top of that gives you an additional 10 to give you 24%. The best deal still since the holiday season and the best we'll probably see for a while here upcoming. So if you guys want to learn more, check the link in the description below and if you'd like to pick something up for this limited time here in regards to the final few hours of this deal feel free to use code espresso but that's it that's what to call it so let me know your thoughts down below what are you guys looking forward to here with the end of season one the start of season two what are the case drop your thoughts but if you enjoyed the video you found it out on insightful do me a favor and drop a like on it and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing all things modern warfare 2 warzone 2 and anything cod related but for now thanks so much for watching honestly espresso i'll see you guys later take care
and peace.